Police Department. This is Graham Dwyer. I'm calling from a drugstore in Ampere McDonough on the edge of Pelham Bay Park. Get a police car out here immediately. Oh, here I am, officer. I'm the man who called. You said something about bodies? Yes. I was walking along one of the drives. I found them in a car. Get in, mister. Show us where. It's this road to the right. A uh, red convertible. It's not right along. Oh, there, there it is. Uh, just up ahead. Two of them. One girl. They're just youngsters. Both been shot. How'd you happen to find him, fellow? Oh, I told you. I was walking here in the park. It's a nice night. I happened to look in. At first, I thought they were just sitting sort of, um... Necking? Yes. Then I took a closer look. Th that's when I ran to the drugstore and called. Hey. What's the matter, officer? Hey, we're in for a lot of grief. You look at these marks. Made by a lipstick. Three X's. This must be the work of some... some fiends. <laughs> This is Steve Granger, private detective, with a story about a killer with a trademark, a triple X, which meant murder plus mania. This is Granger. I was sitting in my office reading the paper, an account of a twin killing in Pelham Bay Park the night before. A killing signed by three X's on the forehead of each body. It was the sort of case that gave you a cold, creepy feeling in spite of the fact that the sun was shining outside. Then my door opened. Mr. Granger. Mr. Granger, I've come here for help. I need you. Well, sit down, ma'am. Thank you. I'm Martha Morton. I want you to try to exonerate my son, John. Why, what's he done? You haven't read that entire story in your paper, Mr. Granger, or you wouldn't ask that. What? John is in jail. He's under suspicion of being a free ex killer. But he couldn't have committed those murders. I know he couldn't. Why not? Well, he's just not that sort of boy. I know I've not been able to give him all the time he should have had. But he's not the kind of boy to do anything as horrible as that. You could be wrong, you know, Mrs. Martin. No, I'm not wrong. That's why I want your help. Okay, I'll drop down and have a talk with him. I see he's being held downtown. Oh, Mr. Granger, please. Take it easy, Mrs. Martin. If he's innocent, he won't be convicted. I grabbed some transportation and went down to police headquarters. I explained my errand and was ushered into the office of Lieutenant Mike Harding. Granger, I think you picked a bad one this time. Why? What have you got on young Morton? Everything. A girl came to us early this morning. She was scared to death. Hysterical. She wanted protection. From whom and why? The dead girl and boy were both friends of hers. They all had a date last night. The dead girl forgot about a second date she had with the Morton boy. Both boys showed up. They tossed a coin. Morton lost. He went away angry with the girl who later reported him. That's still not proof of murder. The lab men made some casts around the car. They fit the boy's shoes. Shoes can be similar. Cut it out. We matched the tires on Morton's car with some tire prints. They were alike, too. I want to go talk with him, Mike. Okay. Come on. How's the kid impress you? Oh, looks like a nice boy. But I've seen angel face killers before. Did Mother hire you? Yeah. She's nice, too. Yeah. Oh, this is his cell. Hey. John, I'm Steve Granger. Your mother employed me to try and get you out of this. I didn't do it. I didn't I do it. Take it easy, kid. I'll do everything I can. What happened after you flipped the nickel and lost? I left him and went out with the other girl. The one who reported you? Yes. Anna Long. Hmm. 
I was mad, see? I took her home early, and, and then I drove my car around the park. Looking for the other couple? Yeah. I wanted to spoil their fun if I could. They wanted to pick a fight with the other guy. I didn't like him. But, Mr. Granger, I never killed them. But you did find them. Well, sure. I spotted the car parked on that side driveway. Yeah. I coasted up in back so they wouldn't hear me. I wanted to see what was going on. So? When I got to the car, I could see there was something wrong. When I saw the three X's knocked on that fire, I went home as fast as I could. Why didn't you notify the police? Well, I, I was going to. But just as I got back in my own car, I heard the sirens. I got out of there. I, I guess I lost my head. Yeah, yeah, I guess you did. Okay, John, try and relax. I'll do what I can. Howdy, I think you've got the boy wrong. It's been a pretty straight story. But no witness. Did you pair up in his hands? Granger, you stick to your business and let me stick to mine. I know the routine. Okay, okay, no offense. After all, he's the logical suspect, isn't he? Yeah. Maybe too logical. Well, anything else I can do, or will you permit me to go about my own affairs? Oh, Lieutenant Harding, I've been waiting oh, for you. Oh, no. But I want to help that poor boy. I wish you two would go someplace and get lost. Oh, Granger, this is Graham Dwyer, Steve Granger. Yeah, according to the papers, you found the body. Yes, I did. But I don't believe that youngster did the killing. Mm -hmm. I offered my services to the uh, lieutenant here, but he's refused them. Oh, uh -huh. I happen to be interested in crime. I'm an amateur criminologist. I see. Well, so long, Hardy. Oh, one moment, Granger. Has the boy's mother retained you? Of course she has. Then why can't we work together? Uh, my work will be free, of course. Uh-oh. You know, Granger, that's an excellent suggestion. Just a second, Hardy. Then I'll have both of you Sherlock's out of my hair. I got away from Graham Dwyer by simply telling him to get in touch with me later at my office, a place I'd try not to be at that time. I nodded so long at him, left the building, and grabbed a cab uptown. Thanks, driver. Keep the change. I moved towards the entrance of my building. shots came, I dropped to the sidewalk fast. You would be pretty fast on the fall in my profession. I lay there waiting for some more shots, but they never came. Only the sound of a car roaring off. I could look at the license plates and made it in a hurry to my telephone. This is Granger. Listen, the guy just took a pot shot at me from a car. I got the license number. Can you check the owner for me? Sure. You think it's about the three X killing? How do I know? I'm no prophet. You're not much of a private Either. While waiting for Harding to call back, I studied the newspaper account of the three X killings. The police had only one suspect, and that was John Morton. I hoped I could dig up an alibi for him because the law was going to be tough about this. I'd got the address of the girl who'd put the finger on John Morton. Her name was Anna Long. I decided to talk with her was in order. Anna Long lived on Colonial Avenue, adjacent Pelham Bay Park. I phoned, told her I'd be out. Yes? You're Anna Long? I'm Steve Granger, the man who phoned. Oh, yes. Come on in, Mr. Granger. Uh, thanks. You said it was about John. Yeah. I want you to tell me everything you know about him. Well, he always acted awfully sweet... I liked him. Then why did you report him to the police? That night he was sort of different. He wanted that date with Marilyn. He was terribly upset when Tommy showed up. Did he make any threats? No, he just grumbled about it always being his luck or, or something like that. You said he acted different. What do you mean by that? Well, we, we rode around and then we stopped off for soda at the corner. And, well, John wouldn't talk or anything. Then he took me home. Joked like that. Didn't even say goodnight. Do you think he could have... Killed his two friends. He didn't like Tommy at all. And he was crazy jealous of Mel. 
The talk with Anna Long brought out nothing. There was no way of establishing an alibi for John Morton since he'd been driving around alone. I thanked the girl, left the house, and started down the street in search of a cab. I walked along and joined the clear weather. I hardly noticed the car as I came up to it. It was facing me. I dropped to the ground, but not until I'd got a good look at that driver. He was wearing a gray hat, dark glasses, and a mustache. I got something else, too. The license number on the plate. The same as before. Well, Harding? Sure, sure. I've got a make on the car for you, Granger. Thanks. You took your time about it, didn't you? What's the matter, Gumshoe? Nervous? I just don't like being shot at. You want protection? I'd be glad to assign a uniformed officer to bodyguard. That's a comedy, and give me the information. I'm afraid it won't make you happy. We checked with the car owner. He left his keys in the car. It disappeared naturally, and it's still missing. Thanks. There's one thing about you, Mike. You're always useful. About as useful as a nylon shirt in a blizzard. As I hung up the phone, a thought struck me. The man who'd fired at me from the car had fired high. Since he had a perfect sight on me, he apparently was just trying to scare me off the Morton case. The trouble was, he was practically succeeding. On my way back to my office, I passed pretty near to Cal Hendricks' place. Since I was getting nowhere fast with this case, and since Cal has more than once been able to help... But I'd pay him a call. Well, well, in trouble again, Steve? What do you mean again? I'm just a sucker for strife. Read about the three X killer, Steve? I'm working on it. That Morton kid? I don't think he did it. Thanks. You're my first friend today. A kid like that might kill an anger, but when they start mocking their corpses with three X's on the forehead, look for a psychopathic murderer. You'll just point him out to me. I can save Mrs. Morton a lot of heartbreak. Uh, this is one time I can be of no help. I thought I'd probably find you here, Granger. Well, 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 the boy lieutenant from Homicide. All right, that's enough, Hendrick. Here, you're holding an innocent kid for murder. Now, uh, look here. Don't needle him, Cal. Lieutenant has high blood pressure. Uh, what do you want with me, sir? That Graham Dwyer, remember him? He said that now you and he were working together, you'd have a startling revelation to make by morning. Oh, he said that, did he? Is it true? No, Mike. It'll make you feel better, it's not. Thanks. Even if my feet are sore, that no was worth the trip up here. I left Cal's place, went to my office, and reported to Mrs. Morton. While I couldn't encourage her too much, I could insinuate I was getting a break on the case. At midnight, I got it. Hello. Granger, have you been listening to the radio? No, who is this? Well, this is Graham Dwyer, the man who's working with you, remember? Oh, yeah. I just heard it over the radio, Granger, and he definitely proves that John Morton didn't kill that boy and girl. What proves what? What are you talking about? There's been another 3X murder. Say that again? The report, it just came over the radio. Same place? Adam Park? Sure, at this time it was only a woman. Only, huh? And she was shot once. And the killer marked three X's on her forehead with a lipstick. Mm. I've got an idea. I'll come over and pick you up, and we can go right out there. There's no sense in doing that, Dwyer. By this time, the police have removed the body. And the examination will be over. Well, just the same. It does prove that the boy didn't commit the murders. Okay, okay, I'll get dressed. Go down and get him out. If I can. Excellent. I'll be over at your office first thing in the morning. Why? I'm going to help you catch the real 3X killer. Wow, thanks. Thanks a lot. I hung up on that nauseating prospect and mulled this latest development over in my mind. Then I got into my clothes and went down to the morgue. Lieutenant Harding was there ahead of me, as ugly as a bear with a singed tail. I might have known you'd show up. Sure. It's sort of clear as my client's son, isn't it? Don't be in such a hurry. Have you identified the murdered woman? In her purse, she carried a driver's license, a hotel credit card, and a birth certificate. 
Now, have we? Don't be so grumpy, Mike. This means you'll have to release that kid. Yes, his mother will be down here with a writ. I'll have to let him go, but that doesn't mean he won't still be under suspicion. Find any clues in the park? Footprints. Millions of them. Made by the curious public as they trampled the place like a bull ring. Anything of the dead woman's effect? No. Newspapers are going to get on you. Aren't they, Mike? Granger, don't needle me. This isn't funny. <laughs> Murder never is. <laughs> At 10 the next morning, I was reading the account of the latest murder when my pal walked in. Well, Mr. Granger, here I am, just as I promised. I've been waiting with bated breath, Dwyer. Good. Now, here's what we can do. Go out to that dead woman's place and look around. Dwyer, just a minute. The police have done that already. But they could have missed something. Pardon me. Granger. Mr. Granger, this is Mrs. Martin. I called to tell you that John is home. Yeah, I uh, I know he's been released. I'm so happy. I, I don't know what to say, Mr. Granger. Let me advise you, Mrs. Martin. Keep John where you can watch him for a while. The police still have him under suspicion. I shall. I'm sending you a check in the mail. Don't bother. I didn't do a thing. But, Mr. Granger... A real killer cleared your boy. Goodbye. That was Mrs. Morton? Yeah. I knew that boy wasn't guilty from the very first. The real 3X killer is a clever man, not a kid. Now, why don't we go out to that woman's place? I want to, but I can't, Wire. But why don't you go out and look around? Use my name if you want to. Thank you. And if anything breaks about another killing, we'll investigate it together. Right, stranger. That's a deal. <laughs> It was such a logical way of losing Graham Dwyer. I took it in a hurry. Also, he would do no more harm snooping around Pelham Bay Park during the morning. A few minutes after he left, I went down to see Lieutenant Harding. He still hadn't been to bed. Don't you start anything this morning, don't oh, you? Now, take it easy, Mike. You're losing your perspective. Have you seen the papers? If we don't do something about this 3X killer, I'll lose more than my perspective, my job. I said take it easy. All I need now is that nutty Dwyer character around. I got rid of him. I sent him out to Pelham Bay, look for clues. I hope he falls in the lake. Harding, have you ever figured that you're dealing with a psychopathic killer? I figured everything, but he's still loose. I think I know how we can catch him. We? And what have you got to do with it? Figured I could uh, help you trap him. Now, oh, Granger, if this is another stunt, I... Listen, will you? Well, go on. The 3X killer must be an egomaniac. He loves to see his trademark written up in the papers. Now, suppose somebody comes along and claims to be the 3X killer. A real one gets jealous. You want to get even with a fake one. In short, you want me to take my gun, murder an innocent citizen, to make it look like a 3X killing. You don't have to go as far as that. You can get hold of a body, can't you? Of an unidentified woman? You're nuts. No. You set up the whole thing. Get a police officer and a policewoman to stage it. The woman is found dead after being shot by the 3X killer. The wagon comes up and takes her down here. Nobody knows if she's alive or dead. Mm. And in the meantime, the real 3X killer pops up in Times Square. That's a chance you'll have to take. Me? I thought it was going to be we. Harding demurred with every demur he could dig up. But I finally reasoned him into it. And he agreed it was one way the 3X killer could be brought into the open. That night, just before midnight, the supposed killing took place. The policewoman, posing as a casual pedestrian, was walking down one of the drives. The man slipped up behind her. The woman staggered to the grass and dropped. The man ran between some trees and disappeared. Two plain clothesmen ran out with the body of the woman brought from the morgue. A woman wearing three X's on a forehead. They placed her where the fake shooting had taken place, while the policewoman slipped out of sight. The stage was set. Just as Harding and I had planned, the radio at midnight came out with the news that another 3X killing had taken place. Yeah. 
This is Graham Dwyer. Have you heard? I just got to call you. We're going out there. I'll pick you up in five minutes. The radio said it was the left drive. Spot's right up ahead. See the police cars? My, my, this one really attracted the crowd. Pull up here. We can walk. This time, we'll pick up the clues. We can come up with the three ex-killers. Don't be too sure. See, Lieutenant Harvey's on the job. Yeah, that poor guy hasn't slept for three days. You say you're walking right along here? Yes, officer. Oh, hi, Lieutenant. Ranger, don't tell me you... What did you bring him along for? We're going to find the three X killer for you. You're going to mind your own business or be locked up. You can't do that. I'm a law-abiding citizen. You get in our way, you'll be obstructing justice. Now behave. You must have gone with your story. Well, I was quite a ways down the drive when I heard the shot. Is he the man who fired it? I think so. Good enough to describe him? Yes, I believe so. He was wearing a dark suit. His hat was gray colored. He had a decided limp. Anything else? He ran over into those trees. Harding looked at me and one eyelid dropped in a surreptitious wink. I nodded. A few minutes later, a man wearing a dark blue suit, gray hat, and sporting a decided limp was moving through those trees. Nobody except the police and I knew that this had all been rehearsed. That both the witness and the man with the limp were really police officers. I looked around carefully, hoping to spot anyone who looked suspicious. Then I discovered something. Something that sent me on the heels of the man posing as a 3X killer. It was not so light now, and I had difficulty spotting my quarry. Then he leaned up ahead, the limp as evident as ever. I stayed behind, just a little out of sight. The phony murderer was being obvious. Also, he was taking a chance because some civic-minded citizen might shoot first and ask later. Then another figure slipped out of a clump of bushes up behind the supposed killer. The gleam of a nickel-plated revolver glinted dimly. The second man prodded the first out of sight. I moved in. Don't stand there. I demand to know why you killed that woman. I'm the three ex-killer. Okay, you caught me. Take me back there. You're the three X killer. That's fantastic. The three O three X killer is clever. His murders are committed without leaving traces. You're a fumbling fool. I'm the three X killer. You're not. This wasn't planned as a three X killer plan. This was stupid. The three X killer's intelligent. He uses reason. Look how he framed that boy for the twin killings in the car. That took reasoning. Yeah? You, you're a fake. You're trying to cash in on the publicity the original 3X killer got. You were jealous of a success. You're the cheapest of all people. You're an imitator. How do you know? Because I happen to be the original 3X. It was I. Do you understand? Okay, Dwyer. Put down that gun. So you found me, Granger. You knew all the time, didn't you? Drop the gun, I said. Not until I take care of this feeble fake. I'm going to... Mike Harding asked me to meet him the following day. Have you seen the newspapers? They're playing up the hoax we pull like they know about it all the time. Uh, they're good guys. And I suppose I'll have to thank you. You know, it was that dreamboat idea you brought in from left field that snared Dwyer. Well, don't bother, dear boy. It was a pleasure to get you off the hook. Yeah, I was hanging there like a flounder. What happens with Dwyer? Uh, he's insane. When we raided his apartment, we found it was a storehouse of information on murder. Finally went to his head. What do I have a shot to kill when he chased me around in those stolen cars? He explained that. He loved making a monkey out of you. Thanks. Love being a monkey and alive. Pardon me, Lieutenant, but the ones you'd be off with. Well, what for? There's been a shooting on the west side. Coming along, Granger? No, Lieutenant, this one is on you. 
I figure on taking a rest. A long rest. 